Uh, so hello. Um, I think it's the first time that we are doing our own like talk in on data and design. Um, you can see here it's our team from Superdot. We are a small studio with just four people. So the second from the left is Diane, that who is the moderator, and we have Aaron, Sarah, and me. And this is us during the pandemic working on the book. So that's why we were um, wearing masks. The thing is, we are quite interdisciplinary team from graphic designers, developers, and uh, business informatics background, which fits quite well for data visualizations. So this is a part of our work we are doing. We were doing in the studio, like in the last 10 years, we are working for organizations, institutions, but also bigger uh, corporate companies like uh, yeah, the Swiss Post, um, institutions like the UNICEF, Swiss National Fonds, and so on. So really a broad field we are doing, print design and also web. So we make, don't make a, a difference in that. But the latest and I think probably also the biggest project is our book, Visualizing Complexity, Modular Information Design Handbook. So the idea of this book was to make data visualizations more accessible um, from the you know, data science side, more for the designers maybe, but from the design side also from, uh, for data scientists. And the idea of the book is to show a method that we developed um, to make more innovative diagram types um, we were working with this method in the studio before. We are also teaching, so this is a way to summarize it and to make it accessible for everyone who is working with data somehow. Actually, I have to tell that this book is not about rules. There's no like wrong or right. The idea is that you try, and the system is also not based on a specific tool, so it's not dependent from a specific software or from a design tool. It's more like a general approach. Okay, I made it to the next slide. So this is, I studied um, at Basel School of Design, uh, visual communication. And this is a really basic exercise that everyone is doing in the like first year. And it had really a big influence on me. So the thing is to have quite some restrictions. You can only use, like in this case, black paper stripes, and you have to come up with as many um, possibilities, as many designs as possible. And this approach, we wanted to um, combine with data. So really going back to the single modules of data design, and then being able to define many more, like individual diagram types. Usually what everyone knows and looks always a bit the same are these predefined chart types where you cannot map um, maybe more than two or three data dimensions and they always look the same. So it's not really easy to find a new way with them. This is an atlas from Otto Neurath, who um, lived in Vienna in the 1930s, and he developed a method that is called um, pictorial statistics. We were always really inspired by it. And um, we analyzed it. So here we are in Vienna, actually in the museum where they keep the originals, and we are analyzing like the structure, how he was working, the colors and everything, because it had a big influence on our work, but also we wanted to understand more. So this was already before we started with the book project. Here is, um, yeah, this is, so the book project we started two years ago. I mean, the idea was already here before, but we were really busy with projects and then there was the lockdown and we had like less project or there was somewhere on hold. And so we took some time. We said it's actually a chance to go somewhere and to try to do our kind of PhD maybe in, 
in a short way and um, going to the Swiss mountains to really focus um, because in the studio it's actually not possible to work on like self-initiated projects like this so much. So here is Diane and me working in our mountain um, studio, like an apartment that we rented and we were really without looking at other projects, without looking at other database books, that was actually our rule that we gave ourselves. We were just sketching and writing by hand because for us it helps a lot to think. And Stein was working more on the data um, science side, like the data analysis, and me coming more from visual communication. I was trying to analyze like how I'm working uh, what I was teaching, how, how my process is actually to understand that better. In the beginning, we didn't know if it would be like an article or a paper or, or even a book. So we just started. Yeah, when we were back at the studio, we took all the sketches, we rearranged them to to find patterns, to, to think of what system we could come up to make data visualization like more fun, more access, accessible and more visual. So we were changing that system, like I think maybe three times over and over again, because once maybe it did not work, once it was too complex. So, but in the end, I think we are happy with the system that we developed. So, the modular information design system actually is divided in five parts. We have the data dimension. So this is just the, the table, the data, the rows in the table, all the values and variables. The diagrammatical dimensions are all the mathematical uh, structures that you can come up with. You will see it in the next slide with more visual. And then the visual dimensions is also what Martin showed, like the color and the shapes and all of that. And then the structuring dimensions. And then the end, the system should help you to define your own diagram type and to make multidimensional visualizations. So what we came up with for the data, because we were thinking a lot like, what data set we could use for the book, because the idea was to have one data set from the beginning to the end of the book. So um, all the visualizations should be based on one data set. And for us, it was really important that everyone can understand the data set. So it shouldn't be too big, not too complex. Everyone should be able to relate to. And what is really easy and everyone is really used to it is like, a story of a family or like a family tree. So <clears throat> here, this picture is kind of random. It shows a family. Uh, it just shows that we have like two families, the family Brown and the family Wagner and the surnames like Anna, Marie, James, Otto, Paul and Elizabeth and two uh, like others that are not on the picture. Um, and the thing is how we were choosing the name was also based on statistics on the 19th and 20th century. So what was the most common names then was really like Otto, James, Marie, Anna, and for the last name, it was Brown and Wagner. So based on statistics about Europe. <clears throat> Here is like the first chapter of the book in yellow, so the structure of the book and the system has the same color code than in the system and the book, it's all overlapping the same color code. So um, this is the story of part of it from the family um, with already some highlights, the name, the year they were born, the year they were dying. So the text is really dense and it has, it contains all the data that we need for the book. And in this yellow chapter, we are explaining all the steps from a text to like the final table you're using for your diagrams. So this is the first part of the table that you can extract from the text. It's like the family name, first name, 
place of birth, year of birth, hometown, and year of death. So super simple, everyone can understand it. This is the second part of the, <clears throat> of the data. So um, this is actually everything that we used for the book. There's no more. This is all these 11 columns is everything. And there's some more <clears throat> parameters that you can take from the text. And then there's also others that you, that we could like assign later, like or calculate later, like the age at the moment they were dying. And this is the second chapter of the book, all in blue, and it's actually really simple. From the layout, we always have like an icon, like a symbol that represents the this approach, and we have a really uh, simple example on the left side, on the bottom left side, and the explanation text. Here on the left side, you can actually see the, the structure of the blue chapter. So the blue chapter, as I said, is like the mathematical components. So we went through, yeah, we analyzed all of them and we picked the ones that were really interesting and important for us for data visualization. So often you um, work with quantities like numbers, a value of something, the position is another category and the relationship. So then the third chapter is the red one. So you always know where you are. It's the same structure than the blue one. You just have more elements in it, it's like 40, and here you can see a selection of 16. We defined a, like a element set with 80 elements. So with these 80 elements, you can do this. Actually, all the diagrams and chart types that exist, but also if you understand the single component from the system, you can also create, or you should be able to create like more innovative, creative, new diagram types. Oh, I didn't say like, yeah, it's like about distinguishing like two categories, like men and women or two families, like by the color or by the shape or the type of the line, the pattern. And then also um, we, we made some research about Otto Neurath and the uh, isotypes so or the pictorial statistics, and we implemented these elements too. So for us, we worked a lot with it, but we didn't see it somewhere else, like in these um, kind of overviews, what elements you can use for data visualizations. And then comes the green part, and the green part is actually really important for how your diagram looks. So it's the structuring dimensions and it's really, it makes a big impact if you align your data values in one line, like the pie chart and not the pie chart, the bar chart you can see on the first little icon, or if you arrange them in the shape of a star or around the shape or free in space, and if you have too many of these data items, too many values, you might be, you might want to group them. So you can also align them uh, in a line, in a grid, or free in space, for example. So we have eight examples of 15 here. So actually the whole book just should be an inspiration to maybe just change a small stuff in your chart or diagram type or do a new one from scratch. So it can be used both ways. <clears throat> so the last chapter in the book is actually 26 examples of um, new diagram types. And our idea was to use all the 80 elements that we designed once at least. So they have overlapping moments, like we would always use 
the color for the same data dimension. So the data dimension of the family, like brown, the family brown is always blue and the family Wagner is red. So there are some things that are always repeating and there are things that are changing and you can, let me see that on the next picture. Yeah. With every example, we have like the code on the right side. So yellow is the data dimension, like age, family, gender, hometown, generation. And on the, um, and below we have the element that we are use, we're using to encode or to map the data. For example, here the age is the line length. In the book, we are explaining that system also in detail. So here you can see that we were mapping family, for example, as I said, with the color, gender with the saturation, generation with the grouping, and the age um, with the line length like before. And we were arranging our data values in this shape with an angle like kind of a star. And now, yeah, okay. Now I'm gonna show you some examples of the book. I hope it's running, yeah. So there are like endless possibilities to work with data and just change the parameters. And for us, it's really important that you realize that what, like what elements you change, what kind of impact does it have and maybe not change everything at once, just one and then you see what happens. You make a series and you choose um, what is the best visualization for your data. So because we don't say, uh, don't make this, don't use that. We just say like, try, okay. Um, we made a Kickstarter campaign. And of course, for our over 700 supporters, we gave them some data with postcards about our Kickstarter campaign. So yeah, we sent, we were really overwhelmed that we sent so many books to the US, to also to Japan, Canada, Australia, many to Europe. So this was really an amazing experience for us. This is the book flip through. So you can see again what I was showing before in single pieces. And of course, you can still buy the book in German and in English everywhere where you can find books, but only like in our online shop, you can find the poster that is like a summary of all the 80 elements. <laughs>